Okay, so rectal insufflation. Um, this is a procedure that is actually really, really helpful for a lot of different things. Um, what I want this video to do is be a precise um, reminder of how to train your patients to do self-administered rectal insufflation and how you yourself um, should be checking in with them and making sure that they're not injuring themselves. So first things first, we have two different kinds of catheters. One is a regular Foley catheter that does not have a lure lock. Now for those, what you'll need is a um, catheter adapter. And what that looks like is this. Um, what you can do is you can attach your catheter adapter using the conical side to the piece of the catheter that doesn't have your lure lock and now you've created a lure lock. This is your rectal insufflation bag. In order to fill this, you're gonna pinch at the 200 ml mark and you'll fill using the lure lock piece on the end of this. Now these bags should last for between 10 and 20 treatments if they are not contaminated and if they are properly stored, which is in a plastic bag, because ozone can make them very rigid and dry them out, which will put a hole in them. So for these catheters, all you're, you're gonna do is screw this onto the end. Now, when you've filled your bag here, you can clamp this off and that will keep the air in the bag. Now the air is gonna diffuse through the rest of the 500 mLs and that's okay. Um, but when you bring this into your patient, what you're gonna show them is that they're gonna put on one set of gloves and then they're gonna put a second glove over their dominant hand. And the reason for that is because you don't wanna contaminate the bag. So when you are administering for the first um, dose, the first dose increase and the second dose increase, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and, and screw on your lure lock and then you're going to put on your lubricating jelly. Now this is the part where you are going to get this right hand messy. The other thing that may need to be done is you may need to insert, for men who have larger prostates, you may need to insert a um, um, anoscope, which is gonna be that, that conical piece. So you insert the anoscope, you pull out the, the internal piece, and then what you'll, that will allow you to do is that will allow you to guide your catheter that four inches up past the prostate. And you really wanna make sure that this ozone is diffusing across the prostate because if it's not doing that, then you're not gonna get the effect for BPH that you're looking for. So once this has been put on, and this has been nicely lubricated and you've inserted it into the, the patient, you're gonna then take off this outer glove, right? So this is inside of your patient, you've checked the rectal opening, you've made sure that there's no fissures, that there's no infections, that there's no damage that's been done. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this valve and you're going to roll the whole thing slowly until all of the ozone is inside. Now, once that's been done, if there is a uh, anoscope in the rectum at that point, you wanna remove it and leave the catheter inside because if you try to leave, if you try to in insert the ozone while the anoscope is in, it's all just gonna leak out. So this is now in, you're gonna let that sit for a minute a um, few seconds is fine typically. And then when you remove this from the anal opening, what you're immediately gonna do is wrap the dirty part in your glove like this, okay? At that point, you're not gonna contaminate anything else. So you can go ahead and unscrew this, and then this can be kept for later use. So it's important to show your patients what you're doing as you're doing it because when they get into the bathroom, they're gonna forget. Um, this is unfamiliar material and they're gonna get um, a little bit scared and a little bit confused. So you wanna make sure that they have a chance to ask any questions that they might have um, and that they have a chance to demonstrate for you if they need some sort of rep repetition. It's really, really important that you check on them during the dose changes to make sure that they haven't injured themselves, punctured themselves, that the dose increase or that the volume increase hasn't created any sort of major irritation. And if you jump dosage too high, too quickly, you can cause some pretty serious inflammation. So that's that.